Hello everyone, I just wanted to make a video sermon today. Um, I've been doing things in series. Uh, today, I'm going to start another type series. And uh, so, it's going, I, I don't know what you call it. I call it, I guess, the Verses series. Uh, I'm going to start out with tender-hearted versus hard-hearted. And I'll do some more, this versus that kind of thing. But my text today in scripture is going to be in Ephesians 4, uh, 30 through 32, in the King James Version of the Bible. And it says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted. That's the word. Forgiving one another as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. So this is called Tender Hearted versus Hard Hearted. It's going to be the versus series when we get going on it. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit, maybe teach you a little bit, and I want you to think a whole lot. Uh, as we go into the Word of God, let the Word of God go into you. Uh, you know, if you know something that's bad, like pride, then the opposite of that would be something good, like humbleness. Hate would be love, and so on. So uh, that's just the way it is. It's if you can figure out the the opposite, you do you you know what something is good. Uh, if you live in a graveyard too long, you stop crying when somebody dies. You you just get used to it. Uh, I want to ask you: Are tears a sign of weakness? Are tears? Tenderness, a sign of weakness. But if you're not tender-hearted, then what are you? I would say hard-hearted. And I'm going to tell you, children of God, I run from being hard-hearted. Uh, that'll get a hold of you. And if it, you know, even Jesus wept. So it sounded like to me that he was tender-hearted. I heard a story about a judge. And uh, there was a, a young man in front of him. And the judge said... My judgment is that it'll be a hundred dollars, and the young man said, "I don't have it." And his mother said, "Please, judge, have mercy on him." And the judge hit his gavel and said, "I said that will be a hundred dollars." Then he put aside his robe, his judge robe. He went to the back to the coat rack, and picked up a tattered garm a coat, and came and put it on him. And he took the hundred dollars out of his pocket and put on the thing. And he says. Then he put his judge, went back and put the judge robe back on and come back up. And he said, I said that'll be $100. But oh, I see someone has paid the fine. And that's what Jesus did when he went on a cross for us. Uh, tears are a sign of being tenderhearted. Uh, I ran across a, a, a fellow. I don't even know if he had much religion at all. But he was telling me how, how hard-hearted he had become. Might have been a member of a gang. I don't remember. And and how hard it was to get back to being tenderhearted. If you ever let that heart of yours get hard, uh, it's going to be so hard. Uh, it, it would be, you know, people say, I know Jesus was tenderhearted. But I'll tell you why I choose to be the, uh, a little hard-hearted and be the opposite. Uh, because I don't want to be taken advantage of. Uh, and it is a great gift to be tender-hearted, but sometimes maybe it seems like a burden because you think people have a tendency to run over you. But the Bible says in Proverbs sixteen seven, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. People won't run over you. Um, and I've told this before, but I worked at a place, and Brother Willie Wooten worked there. He was a supervisor. He wasn't my supervisor. But this fellow was giving me a hard time. And Brother Willie spoke up. And he said, don't you know that Brother Dale's a minister? And that guy said, yeah, I know. He, he wasn't impressed at all. And Brother Willie said, well, maybe he might could ask the Lord to do something good for you. And it's like a light bulb went off in that guy's head. And he, oh. And then Brother Willie waited that right amount of time. And that only Brother Willie Wooten, he can do it best, I think. And and then just in a minute, Brother Willie said, or he could ask the Lord to do something else to you. 
And I don't know whether the man thought I was going to turn him into a bullfrog or what it was, but he didn't bother me no more. God will fight your battles. Uh, because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard, and because you have torn your clothes and wept before me, I myself have heard, and I will indeed gather you to your fathers, and you will be gathered to your grave in peace. Your eyes will not see the disaster I'm bringing on this place. I think that's in Second Kings 22, 19 through 20. Josiah made a commitment to the Lord to keep the commandments of the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul. The people led, he led agreed to follow his lead. Josiah goes about demolishing all the indications of idolatry and observing the Lord's Passover for the first time in many years. 2 Kings 23, 25 says, Before him there was no king like him who turned before the Lord to the Lord with all his heart and his soul and with all his strength according to all the law of Moses. And no one like rose after him. Hang in there with me. We're going to talk about hard-hearted in a minute, okay? Uh, tender-hearted versus harder. Praying for spiritual awareness means praying to have a tender heart that is ready to respond to God immediately. How can we cultivate a tender heart towards God? A tender heart will receive the Word of God because he, he's got his, it's, it's plowed up. It's, the ground is fallow where the, the seed in the Word can come in. Josiah received the word of God when he heard it. Judah had neglected God's word so completely that it was buried under the rubble in a neglected temple. Josiah opened up his heart to hear and receive what was in his presence. He sent to a prophetess to explain and give him information he needed to follow God's path. A tender heart makes up its mind to be humble before God. Uh, Josiah tore his clothes and cried out to God. Now not a, as a, something else for a king to do to humble down. In that moment, he recognized two things. He recognized his status before the king of the universe. He recognized his sin before a righteous God. And it takes humility to do that. Humility said, God is greater and I am dependent. Only when we recognize our dependence and the reality of how much we need, God can, we know the power of humility. There are two types of people. One that walks in the room and says, here I am. And the other walks in and said, oh, there you are. Uh, I've shared with you how tenderhearted I am. I've shared with you that when me and Melinda are watching something, that I'm the one that's going to be choking up and crying. Uh, and and it, I have felt bad in the past because I didn't see other ministers uh, crying like I did. And I thought, well, what's wrong with me? But that's the way I am. And I'd be afraid to, to tinker with it too much that I might. Go back the other way. And it's so unbelievable to me unbelievable to me that though I'm easy to cry, I don't cry when I'm conducting a funeral. I conducted my mother's, my father's, my brother's, my brother-in-law without shedding a tear, I don't think. Uh, a hard heart. Hebrews 3, 7 says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says today, if you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the day of provocation in the, tip, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. It's just too easy to get bitterness. I'm afraid of it. I want to run the other way. Uh, this is I'm going to read you a story because I can't do it by memory. To describe why our common responses to life's challenges don't work, always work out like we would like. Uh, there was a young man named Tom who had lived in a small village. He was an angry young man overreacting to every offense, offense and keeping others at a distance. In desperation, he Parents asked him to go to see an eccentric old priest who lived in the vision. You know, these priests and preachers, they're kind of eccentric, aren't they? The priest was renowned for his unorthodox methods that somehow worked. When Tom saw the priest, the older man told the youth to go away and come back, with two, come back with two lumps of clay. He returned a few hours and then was told to make a base out of one of the lumps. The young man thought this must have been part of the therapy, therapy so he threw himself in the task with enthusiasm believing that the opportunity to create art would help him with his temper. He made the vase, decorated it, put something on it to harden it. Upon completion, Tom presented a beautiful vase to the priest. He was proud of his accomplishment and believed that he was now cured of his anger issues. The priest smiled approvingly and gave the young man a hammer. Now hit the vase with this hammer, the priest said. Uh, but it will break my beautiful creation, Tom protested. Hit the vase with a hammer, the priest insisted. And... Uh, 
Don't you like it? Isn't it good enough for you? Hit the base with a hammer, the priest continued. I know the young man snatched the hammer from the priest and tapped it firmly. The base immediately smashed into pieces. Now look what you've done, Tom said angrily. You've wasted all my hard work. The priest ignored the outburst and left the room for a moment. He returned with the, with the second lump of clay and placed it on the floor next to the young man. I suppose you want me to waste my time by making another vase. Well, you can forget about it, Tom, said rudely. The priest looked at him with kindness and said, hit the clay with a hammer. What pleasure, the young man responded. He swung the hammer with all his might and hit the clay with a thud, leaving a large mark. Happy now? What was the point of that? The priest picked up the broken pieces of the vase and held his out in his hands before the young man. See this vase? This is like your heart. You think you need to be hard to cope with the inevitable disappointments that happen in life. You respond with anger, bitterness, and violence, keeping people out of distance, but it doesn't work. Your hardness makes you more fragile. Adversity breaks your spirit too easily. The priest then picked up the lump of clay. It had a mark where the hammer had hit it, but it was still in one piece. You need to soften your heart and be more like this clay. It is still impacted by what it happens to it, but it can be restored easier. A soft heart forgives, loves, and uses soft words. It understands that pain and suffering is a part of life, and instead of fiercely resisting it, it absorbs a blow. It feels the pain, but isn't broken by it. Is your heart so hard that instead of protecting yourself, you're shattered when life's disappointments come? Are you impacted by outside influences more than you need to be? Do you need to... Do you need to soften your heart by forgiving who hurt you? What can you do better to cope with life's challenges? I know that some of this I read pretty fast, but I didn't want, I think you can understand it. Maybe you can go back. And, but uh, I, I didn't want to go too long. Uh, it's a little longer right now than I need to. But uh, in conclusion, be like an M&M candy. Hard on the outside, but soft on the inside. Don't give away that you can be hurt easily. But stay tender in your heart no matter what you do. Life will try to make us bitter. Life will try to make us hard. Uh, I, I really uh, am looking forward to doing these verses videos uh, uh, and hope that you get something out of it. I, I really got something out of making them for you. So I've been given my phone number at the end of these, 256-508-4410. Call or text me and let me know. Uh, get, have some feedback if you enjoyed them give me some comments subscribe if you feel like it and uh, I'm praying for you if you need me you got my number may God bless you is my prayer